Bam! The stream has begun and I'm gonna wait for some people to pop in. The stream looks healthy. I think my audio is good. Let's see. Yeah, very good. Excellent. The stream is public. Everything is cool. All right. I think we got some people coming in. The stream looks good. Yes. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. How, uh, how is everybody doing today? Yes, yes, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome, beautiful people. Hello, Vaselin. Hi, can you hear me well? You guys can hear me fine, right? That's the most important thing. I have the mic. The mic is good. I know there's a little bit of delay between the chat and whatever. Okay, so as people come in, we're gonna be starting with, uh, just let me, I'll, I'll just start with uh, how my week has been going and all that. Uh, yeah. All right, so first of all, uh, thank you everyone for coming in. Uh, welcome, and I do these live streams once in a while. Hello, Mark, hi. And uh, so I'll just tell you, uh, recently, I saw actually recently let's what should we talk about first of all it's Mother's Day so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there uh, as a son I never appreciated uh, how difficult parenting really is until I started to see my own friends have uh, children and then I see how difficult it is, uh, how little sleep they get, and just overall, it's an insane amount of giving nonstop, and kids are just so needy, and so, you know, call your mom, call your dad, tell them, thank you for all the sacrifice that you have done. Um, you know, especially when you're a child, you have no idea, right, of how needy you are and how annoying you are um, until you're much older and you see what it's like to raise kids. I don't have a child myself, but, uh, you know, maybe one day I will. And I, I think that it's, it's a great day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone and you got to appreciate your mom and if you're a teenager uh, you are probably uh, in this uh, teenagers go through that phase where they hate their parents and they hate everything and it's pretty crazy the amount of stuff that people need to deal with uh, especially parents is this a better thing oh my little green screen is showing on the corner and if you guys have any questions, please ask and I will get to them, okay? And be detailed in your questions, like, yeah, tell me a little about yourself so that I can understand what your starting point is and what your question, I need more context whenever you're asking questions so that I can answer fully, okay? So, um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> What was I going to say? Uh, next thing I was going to say, oh, a little chat. Like, basically, I saw this uh, documentary. Uh, let me switch it. It's called Seaspiracy. It was on Netflix. And basically, this thing was, it's basically another one of those documentaries where, you know, environmental documentaries where the, they're basically telling you the world is fucked and 
and you know we already know that but then this one is more focused on the fishing industry and oh my god guys it's so bad it's so bad honestly it's really really bad so basically it goes through like a bunch of things first of all how whales are being killed uh, especially in japan that's how it starts and then it also talks about how uh, there's something called bycatch whenever you're a fisherman and you're let's say trying to catch a uh, trout or salmon or something right but what ends up happening is you end up catching all these other fish and animals birds that you didn't intend to catch and they end up being killed or just you know thrown back and they probably die in the process and um, like we're talking like countless amount of fish being uh, caught not intended to be caught and then being killed in the process and then there there's another thing called the i forgot i forgot what it's called the pacific great garbage patch the great pacific um yeah garbage patch basically it's just like imagine uh trash for miles and miles uh, like, like like hundreds of miles okay in just like the pacific like between the united states and asia just just trash and so what this documentary points out is that uh a lot of that trash is is not just plastic that we all use uh but it's half of it is apparently fishing nets and fishing gear that's just ends up in the ocean which ends up destroying more fish right and then it basically says that if we keep fishing at this rate that we're not going to have any fish left in the oceans by 2048 which is not very far away 27 years from now right I'll be like 65 uh, you'll be you know whatever your age in 27 years that's in our lifetime uh, no more fish okay so what are we supposed to do stop eating fish um, I don't know oh and the other thing is whenever you see like uh, something that says dolphin safe like you, you buy a can of tuna right and it has like this logo it says dolphin safe it's actually complete bullshit this label is complete bullshit because they cannot actually oversee and uh, they, they can't really like guarantee that they're not catching dolphins okay in fact overseers that happen to uh, be whistleblowers and call out like usually they're not they're, they're not a, they're not able to monitor the boats because you know you're out in the ocean there's no patrolling uh, it's just like it's just they're like they could do whatever they want you know there's no police out there right so the there's been times where overseers go and they report that this ship is not doing the right thing and they end up getting killed okay it's like the mafia but like the ocean version all right and so it just like basically we're fucked okay and i have a very nihilist Point of view like I don't have that much faith in humanity um, the only thing that would solve all this is if we um, you know a lot of us die right like if like the human population collapses right and um, you know it's funny because like this coronavirus thing that happened was not like a real big deal in terms of you know it's nothing like polio a hundred years ago which was actually devastating um, and so I don't think humans are gonna die off anytime soon and what are some of your comments here uh, slug says I blame China and Japan for 90% of it I mean honestly everyone is to blame if you the only way to stop making a, an impact on the climate is to kill yourself right like if you are existing you are a consumer only uh, you have to consume to survive you you can't not eat 
And then there's even documentaries about how messed up the uh, agricultural uh, and the all the agricultural uh, system is messed up. And there's it's just endless. Like you can't really like if you're if you're you can't really eat anything and feel safe about it at this point. So, but you got to eat. So, what can we do? And if you're coming in late, uh, I'm talking about this documentary I saw called Sea Spiracy. And um, yeah, so um, oh, and last uh, it was a couple of weeks ago. I created a a survey which a lot of you answered. Thank you very much. I got 187 responses. And one of the main things I wanted to know was this. Uh, are programs that are designed to be shorter something that would interest you? 92% of you said yes. Because uh, right now I have my rings routine and hypertrophy routine. And also those are my premium programs that uh, are very thorough. But they take like over an hour to complete. Like let's say an hour and a half, three times a week. And it turns out a lot of people don't have that kind of time. So I've been um, coming up with a routine, a new routine that's going to be shorter that you can do in like 20, 30 minutes, uh, freak much more frequently and for a shorter amount of time. So be on the lookout for the around this month, end of this month for that new program that I'm going to be coming out. You know, so overwhelmingly, most people seem like they don't have enough time or the programming is too complicated. And um, most of you want to uh, gain full body strength and mass. And a lot of you, I'm glad uh, I asked which of the following equipment do you have access to or own? And 43% of you said gymnast you guys have gymnastic strings and pull up bars, which is great. Thank you. I, I'm, I like to see that my uh, followers have gymnastics rings and a pull-up bar because those are just so good. Okay. Now, um, and then, and then I got a lot of customized responses. Uh, everyone saying like, you know, I asked which of my programs would you say are the most beneficial. Uh, the ultimate flexibility bundle, uh, the rings routine, uh, the hypertrophy routine, the recommended routine, the hamstring flexibility program I have, uh, and the links to these are in the description of the video probably right now, and my yoga, my smart core program, a lot of you like my program, so that's great, thank you for your support, and I'm glad that people are benefiting from these programs all right and i'm gonna try to make a new one that will be uh, just right for people who don't have as much time okay uh what else did i want to go over before i want to go over your questions oh i just wanted to say uh if you missed my last video it's sustainable weight loss tips and uh basically three tips to lose weight and keep it off and I go over, you know, a bunch of things like don't eat after 8 p.m. And uh, I'll, I'll just put the link to this in the chat right now. Latest video. Bam. All right. Um, if you're just tuning in, happy Mother's Day. Thank you for joining in. I'm going to be on for maybe an hour so if you have any questions please let me know and uh, if you are a parent or you're not a parent by the way you should watch this video later on it's a uh, Dana Carvey hundred year old man um, it, it he's like he, he basically says uh, if you don't know what it's like if you want to know what it's like to have a kid adopt a hundred year old man what it's like I'm gonna put it in the chat what it's like to have kids and then and then he goes on that so watch that later on it's really funny and yeah 
and then we close these. By the way, I'm a huge fan of counting calories, but I wanted to make this video because, uh, because I wanted to share like sustain. Would recommend you go over it. Opt for low calorie drinks. Like instead of having a meal or a snack, you know, you can have coffee, tea, iced tea, sparkling water, unsweetened almond milk, unsweetened coconut water. And then uh, the most important tip is be super conscious of everything that's about to enter your mouth. So before you put food in your mouth, ask yourself always this question, is this what I really want right now? Okay, um, is this what I really want? Makes you much more self-aware. And you know, counting calories is, does this as well so if you've ever counted calories you basically you're logging everything that you're putting in your mouth and if you're doing that you're understanding how much you're eating when you're eating what you're eating and what your triggers are for eating like uh you'll you'll notice patterns uh and understand yourself much more all right I got like a message on YouTube saying it's missing some frames. Anyway, I hope it's working well. Someone say in the chat if it's working well or not working well. And if you could hear me well. I think you guys can hear me well. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, what else was I going to say before I get to your questions? I think that was it. If I come up with something else, uh, if I remember what else, let me know. Oh, um, and if you need like personalized online coaching, please uh, hit me up here. And I'll just, uh, you, we could do a video chat together, email back and forth. I really, really, really do well when it comes to personal one-on-one -on -one training. And I think uh, if you need any help, Please uh, feel free to hit me up and let's have a session together or a few sessions so you can really get on the ball and take your stuff to the next level. Okay, so I'll just play this while I am talking. And uh, this is just like a video of me at Muscle Beach. All right, so I'm going to switch to the chat right now and get to your questions t commando says love from india thank you um hi where to start stretching and flexibility workout that's a good question um there are so many different resources for flexibility um if you want something where you are actually so like uh, i'll say it this way follow along so i have like a playlist of my top 10 follow along yoga videos um and ooh, let me put that in the chat for you top 10 follow along yoga videos this playlist has a lot of my videos and i should add my latest one too even though it won't be a top 10 anymore um, i have this fast flow yoga video um let me put this in there too let me just share this with my in the chat latest yoga video and these follow along yoga videos are really good at overall just increasing your body um, flexibility overall and then if you want something more robust the ultimate flexibility bundle which is basically uh, you'll get the best bang for your buck where i have my hamstring flexibility program my hip flexibility program and my shoulder and upper back flexibility programs which are all um, basically three uh, which are all basically 30 minutes long and so it doesn't take too much time and it's very effective uh, ultimate flexibility bundle so like if you want to stretch your hamstrings your hips your shoulders you can buy this and takes all the guesswork out just follow the video do do them like either once a week or if you want to focus on your hamstrings do that one three times a week and you will have progress really fast 
okay and those are like laser focused and very effective those are like the cream of the crop okay and so what is this all right uh, I'm gonna get to your questions next here I have a question in regards to a post you made some years ago in a, on reddit where you so, spoke about your lower back bending or curving when sitting down or doing downward dog how did you find a solution you got okay earth measurement I'm answering your question now you basically have to bend you have to bend your uh, knees a little bit and try to like do an anterior pelvic tilt meaning stick your butt out okay and i have a video on i have a video on anterior pelvic tilt versus posterior pelvic tilt if you're not sure what that is i know what where is that video hmm why isn't it coming up anterior pelvic tilt and my name shouldn't that come up yes i think it's this one all about pelvic tilts yes it is okay so the title is all about pelvic tilts anterior pelvic tilt video so that you'll understand how to actually tilt your uh, hips and what it means for your downward dog for your hamstring flexibility or hamstring stretches for your hip flexor stretches which one which tilt to do where and all that stuff okay so yeah and i'm gonna go to the next question and please keep them coming and give this video a thumbs up i want to see more likes only six likes come on guys you can do better than that all right um uh, let's see Pritam is asking I'm not progressing fast with my rings training is it supposed to be so is progressions with rings slower than that with conventional weight training rings are really hard Pritam uh, I don't know what your situation is if you're very tall and or very heavy overweight or obese uh, body weight exercises in general will be very slow um, and that's not a big deal you can just you have to work on it on your own pace don't the concept of like progressing slow or fast is it's only relative to you okay you can't compare yourself with others and you are on your own journey so rings are really difficult in general you have to keep at it do frequent sessions uh, try not to go to absolute failure where you're just so exhausted that you're going to injure yourself okay because the chance of injury increases toward the end of your workout when you're really exhausted and you're like let me just do one more set you know you don't have to push it super hard but you should be consistent with it okay and uh and just have fun with it you know just have fun uh and also know that you have to be gentle with yourself and be kind to yourself because that you are probably progressing little by little and those little achievements add up a lot like in the beginning when you're starting with a basic support hold maybe you're just up there and you're shaky and your elbows are bent and then two weeks from then uh, you're not shaky anymore and your elbows are straight and and then like a month after that you're solid and you're starting to turn the rings out like those are and those each session like you might have progress just very incrementally or maybe sometimes you'll be in a plateau so if you are in a plateau or whatever like you know just just keep at it okay so um yeah and you guys keep asking questions and i'll get to you all right thanks for telling me that the video and sound is good all right 
Mitch has a question. Let me uh, switch to something else. Yeah, you guys could watch me stretching. That's kind of boring, right? Watching me stretch. I'll, I'll play something else while we are while we are doing this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Which one should I play that is visually good? Oh, and if you haven't seen my Bulletproof Your Shoulders video, it's a really good one. I made that one like two months ago. And, oh, all these calisthenic workouts. I'll just play these. This is entertaining. It's just me um, showing my different calisthenics workout at Muscle Beach. Enjoy it while I talk. <laughs> all right. How can I, Mitch is asking, how can I develop the strength to probably do the transition at the start of the skin to cat? The part where your knees go from parallel to the ground to an inverted hang. The best way to do that part is by doing uh, the negative. So I believe I say that in the skin to cat video. So basically go into inverted hang and then with straight arms, Tuck your knees into your chest and lower down as slowly as possible while keeping your elbows straight and your knees tucked in. All right, uh, that you're basically doing the negative part of a tucked front lever pull, which is part of the skin to cat. Um, and if any of this sounds like, oh, did I just do it? Uh, well, I just. Uh, I'm showing part of the inverted hang entry uh, in the, I run, like just coincidentally skin the cat on Tronique you type skin the cat and my name uh, I believe I go over these things let me just put the link to this in the chat right now and I'll tag you Mitch Skin the cat. Um, basically, whenever you're going, so you're saying how to do this part right there. You basically, if you're in an inverted hang from right here, you want to keep your elbows straight and lower down with slower than that. Okay? Negatives, exactly. You got it. Watch this video. I have a whole video uh, rings series with this beautiful ocean background and my 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 Medox who passed away last December. Um, yeah, um, she is awesome. <laughs> uh, so another question pushing exercises such as weighted dips archer push-ups and pike push-ups are progressing fine and always have been but my pulling always plateaus more often than not any reasons why so in general uh some people so first of all think about push-ups and pike push-ups all right those are not your full body weight your hands are on the floor, right? When you're doing push-ups. Uh, compare that to pull-ups where you're doing full body weight. You're not, your hands are not supported on the ground at all, right? So it's going to be much harder to do pulling exercises in general. Uh, of course, rows are like push-ups. Your feet are on the floor. So it's not as... Um, it's not as it's not as uh, difficult as a pull-up and some people have some body types gravitate toward being stronger just naturally whether it's the limb ratios or muscle insertions some people are much stronger at pulling exercises while others are much stronger at pushing exercises in general I think it's very normal to be a little better at pushing exercises the thing is whenever you're doing a pulling exercise like a pull-up what are you activating your lats primarily your lats and what are the lats a lot of people are disconnected from the lats it's behind you you can't see it you don't even know what it feels like when you're using it uh, 
And so all these factors that you can't, you don't see it, you don't feel it, uh, and you have to activate it, make it such that it's harder to use it. Whereas a dip or a push-up, you know, you're using your triceps, you're using your chest, it's right there, you're very like in tune with those muscles. So in general, people are a little more comfortable with pushing exercises, especially when you're like a teenager and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do the 100 push-up challenge, right? So uh, you get like very well acquainted with pushing exercises uh, much earlier on than pulling exercises. So that was a great question and I'm happy to answer it. You have a third question. Um, okay, let's hear it. If you, if you want to answer more of mine, yes, of course I do, yeah. Um, uh, you've been doing the bodyweight fitness recommended routine for about a year. The progressions are getting pretty intense. I'm exhausted and plateauing. Any suggestions? So I don't know if you are taking a deload week every once in a while but like every it depends on the person and it depends on your rate of recovery but like the every three to six weeks you should have a deload week a deload week is basically a week where you either do nothing or you do like half the amount of sets and reps half the volume than usual this allows your body to fully recover so that when you get back in your workout, you're like fresh. And I wrote a good amount on deload weeks. Deload. I'm just gonna type deload and Ontronic in Google. And you'll see here the importance of rest days and deload weeks. Yes to deload. You are doing a deload or you haven't done it. Um, in general though, the harder, um, I will say like, your workouts will never feel easier. It will always feel difficult if you are doing the proper intensity, okay? It should always feel difficult, unfortunately. So you are deloading, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, it's always gonna be a struggle. And like, as you get to the more advanced progressions, uh, it's just gonna be, it's gonna take longer, it's gonna, you know, as you're getting more advanced, it's just things take longer. It's just how it goes. Unless you're like really short and lean, your uh, rate of progress is much, is not gonna be as linear as someone who's like really short and lean, you know? So um, is it time to switch programs? I'm not sure uh, I can answer that. Uh, I would have to know, I wouldn't recommend the split per se. It doesn't mean it's more efficient. Uh, uh, it might help. It might not help. I would have to, it's, it's a little hard to answer that without knowing you in greater detail. It's a little bit limited right now. But in general, understand that like, when some, for someone to go from no push-ups to push-ups on the floor takes a certain amount of time but to go from like push-ups to planche push-ups takes four to eight years okay um so like just to give you an understanding the whole reason i say that is because it just takes longer to progress as you get um as you get more and more advanced and you just have to pick exercises that you love Maybe you need to cut out some things so that your re recovery is like uh, faster and that you're a little more laser focused on very specific goals, okay? Um, uh, Trivision is asking, do you have tips for staying consistent with training? Use a log. It's very important to use a training log. And whether you do that by... Um, whether you do that by like simply just getting a pen and paper, write the date, write what exercises you did, how many sets and reps of it you did, and that should be enough, okay? 
you could do it on your phone you could do it on a pen and paper i prefer uh, i used to always do it on pen and paper lately i've been doing it on my phone but very simply if you keep a log you'll you'll know very well like you could look back and you'll see i haven't worked out in five days okay i gotta get it in okay you gotta get it in um or you've been working out like you see your log and you're like oh this is my third day in a row like great for me uh personally having a log is like a to-do list okay i always make a to-do list um every week sometimes every day okay and on your to-do list write that you have to work out okay always have that in there to remind yourself because when we have we have very little uh, we have very short attention spans our attention spans are very short right now we're like goldfish as like unless you meditate all the time maybe your t attention span is better than most people but our attention span is generally short and a to-do list is fantastic for keeping us on track okay because um, it's so easy to get swayed and you know you know how that goes uh one more question from pritam while doing my ring pushing sessions i do feel impingement in my shoulders for a few days i do keep my hands very close to my body while doing the support hold and the dips what could be the reason this is a tough question to answer uh in general i would recommend i would recommend you warm up with my uh where's my video bulletproof your shoulders is that what the name of the title was so i made that video like two months uh shoulder rehab let me see what i let me see what the video is yeah okay the, the title is uh let me tag you uh, pritam uh top nine exercises to rehab protect and warm up your shoulders do this like all the time okay do this on your rest days. Do this before your workout. Really get the rotator cuff really strong so that if there's any weak links, if the humerus, if the upper arm bone is just not being centered properly uh, so that it activates all the muscles and overall your rotator cuff muscles will stay robust. And you feel pain and impingement? maybe don't do those exercises in for like a week or two and then revisit them or do something else like do let's say push-ups on the rings or some other exercise to substitute it in the meantime if it doesn't cause pain okay i'm gonna close this one and keep playing my rings workout video not rings my calisthenics workout this is me on the slack line yeah all right so um yeah mitch says uh, pulling is definitely a bit el elusive it's a shame pulling ex exercises are more enjoyable for me yeah pulling exercises are very enjoyable for me too i love working toward the one arm chin up with mantle chin ups and uh front lever i love those much more than any pushing exercises and they're really hard but them being really hard doesn't deter me it actually motivates me when something is challenging and is getting me out of my comfort zone that's a good thing okay comfort zones are very uncomfortable i know it sounds ironic but comfort zones suck get out of your comfort zone Push yourself to the edge and you'll feel much better in the long run, okay? So, yeah. Um, yeah, Mitch, if you need like more uh, 
personal, you know, if, if you need like a coaching session with me, go for it. We can really like hone in and see what's causing you to plateau. Okay. Uh, Laura says, hi, Antoine, a big thanks for all that you do to educate everyone. You are welcome. Um, I don't know why it says message redacted sometimes. I'm guessing you guys removed your messages. Anyway, so <clears throat> utility account. Oh, Pritam, you say thank you. You're welcome, Pritam. And utility account says, uh, hey, Antronic just started watching you and absolutely love your content. Just started your Reddit plan and hope to see some changes because I can't even do a single push-up. Don't worry, you will be able to do a push-up very soon. Um, just do those incline push-ups. Get a really strong plank position. You know, when you're in plank, lower down slowly with the elbows close to you, as slowly as possible. Maybe count from 10 to zero and just like slowly lower down. Eventually you'll be able to stop halfway. Eventually you'll be able to realize that you're stopping halfway and you're able to push yourself up, okay? So really you're gonna get there and then eventually push-ups are gonna be really easy. Okay, and then next thing you know, you're going to be doing pull-ups. Just stick to it. Understand that there is no, um, don't like set ridiculous deadlines like I'm going to be doing uh, 20 push-ups next month because nature has its own plans. Okay, you allow your body to recover, stay consistent at it, persevere, and you're you're going to get there and you're going to exceed all expectations. You just have to allow yourself to, you just have to allow yourself to, you know, just be gentle with yourself at the same time and stay motivated. I know there will be times when you're not going to be motivated. So you have to force yourself to work out and understand that whenever you do work out, you feel better afterwards okay unless you injure yourself obviously but most of the time we're not injuring ourselves whenever you work out associate that it's like operant conditioning right um you do this thing you get a treat you do you do your workout you get uh, you look a little better you do the workout you feel better you do the workout you get sweaty and, you, and then you take a shower and you feel great associate working out with feeling better don't associate it with punishment like this weird thing like in internally like in our religion uh, or christian religion there's like this thing like you're a sinner you're inherently bad you're evil you need to punish yourself like for, people apply these concepts like no pain no gain all these weird things to uh working out and uh it's not it's not really helpful okay be nice to yourself understand the long game what is the long game to feel good in your body to feel great to lose the excess fat to just have a healthy consistent routine to be a leader to be um lead by example is what i'm saying so if everyone around you is unhealthy don't try to change everyone you yourself change yourself you be the role model and whoever jives with that whoever feels that is you're doing something right they'll come to you and they'll be inspired by you okay um so um uh yeah so don't be sad that you can't do a push-up and just keep going for it understand that you have a long life ahead of you it's not about achieving a certain thing because once you do achieve something guess what you're going to acclimate immediately to that standard and you're going to want to go further so if you want to do the splits what happens when people get the splits nothing nothing changes you get the splits and then you want to go to over splits right you want to get the pull up you get the pull up what do you want to do you want to do five pull ups you get uh, <laughs> so my point is this is an ever uh, a constant journey uh, a a, and it never ends and so always take the long term uh, long term 
like way of thinking okay so I'm gonna grab some water <laughs> <clears throat> all right laura says right now i can manage one pull-up by the end of the year i want to do five five proper clean pull-ups do you think this is a realistic goal provided my diet's in check and i train three uh, times a week and run three times a week um without knowing who you are at all i just know your name is laura so you're a woman definitely five pull-ups is uh, by the end of the year so like in six months i think it's possible definitely absolutely um and you'll get there with women they progress a little bit slower when it comes to pulling exercises than men uh, usually they have a, a far less of a foundation in regards to strength so it's a little bit harder to get there in the beginning but you will get there and you'll be able to you're going to be able to do more pull-ups cleaner pull-ups than most men okay i believe in you you stay motivated uh just stick to it and if you're not motivated sometimes you got to push it don't wait for the motivation just stick to discipline uh what's worked for you in terms of breaking your personal plateaus in calisthenics uh seriously uh what helps me is like getting one extra workout in or doing like an extra set either of those because usually like i'm doing like uh, i'm working out like three times a week uh in regards to strength training and if i'm like if my re rate of recovery is really good and i feel i can do another one i will do that and then I'll uh, I'll have I'll bump it up to like four times a week and I'll feel like that's a little faster in terms of progress so or if you're always doing three sets doing like a fourth set but you have to be very careful with how much more you do because it cuts into your recovery so you have to understand the importance of auto regulation you have to regulate and be much more conscious and self-aware with um with your general uh you know with your body okay is it normal that is it nor stanislaus is asking is it normal that i can't do a pancake all the way to the floor or get into a palms to floor pike i can deadlift 200 pounds for reps and i work on nordic curls is it just genetic um i don't think the deadlifting or the nordic curls have anything to do with your pancake uh, or pike flexibility i know that a deadlift requires some pike flexibility but not like a gargantuan amount and and the nordic curls Nordic curls are, are so hamstring intensive. If you do that a lot, uh, it's very easy for your hamstrings to get tighter if you're not working on negating that. Okay, so um, am I at the end of this thing? Yes, I am. I will play this. Okay, now, so that's basically my answer to that. Oh, oh, oh it's not oh and it's not genetic absolutely not it's not genetic so like a lot of people think oh flexibility is genetics um okay it's not like how many people do i know that work out regularly a lot of people how many people do i know that don't stretch regularly most people so like you know when you're doing your deadlifts let's say you're doing i'm gonna do five sets of five reps of deadlifts right okay are you doing five sets of 30 seconds of pancake splits probably not okay in other words people have a very regimented strength training program 
but they don't have the same regimented uh, flexibility program okay and because of that uh, but it, like uh, what I'm trying to say is that if you had if you put the same amount of time under tension uh, focusing on flexibility versus uh, you know just like you do with your strength training you're gonna progress very well and then you're gonna see it has nothing to do with genetics okay of course there's some role in genetics but genetics are such a minor role it's more about mindset and what you put into it okay <clears throat> uh, Mitch is asking what's the major differences between your hypertrophy routine versus Daniel's body by rings program I'm not sure on the details of the Daniel's body by rings program so I can't really answer but I could say that my hypertrophy routine has uh, utilizes daily undulating periodization and I'm not sure if Daniel's does that um, I'm sure there's big differences so um, but who knows I, I can't say for sure um, Bobo's asking uh, do you have any tips for balancing strength training and working a physically demanding job I am a young vegetable farmer and sometimes my recovery affects the quality of my work that's a tough one but overall so overall if uh, you can do you can do both you can be like a construction worker who is doing physical labor and still get your workout in the thing is don't start at too hard of a session like uh, don't start I mean don't start at too high of an intensity don't make things too hard for yourself okay so because you're I don't know if you're like just starting out or you've been strength training for a while but the more you do it the more you're going your body is going to adapt to being able to do both okay uh, I don't have uh, any specific tips other than don't kill yourself during your actual workout uh, take it take it take your progress slow okay it doesn't have to be like like so slow that you're not going anywhere but my point is make the workout such that you're able to complete it and you didn't push yourself so hard that you can't work the next day okay does that make sense basically try to do the minimum effective dose <clears throat> try to do the minimum effective dose that will give uh, that will provide a training effect okay and it's just like how pharmacology works right you want to if you want to take a drug of something there you only take if you take like the minimum amount where you get the threshold effects so it has the positive effect and the least side effects that's the way to go for it and that way you'll be able to regulate yourself better and better maybe you realize okay after a couple of weeks of doing what you think is the minimum you realize it's a little too low and now you can bump it up a little more because you're able to manage both work and the workout okay so I hope that helps you Boba and I'm gonna move on if I can't sit in an L-sit position on the floor, I have a rounded back and I'm, still, and I'm still working on my pike flexibility. Should I wait to train the compression strength uh, since I can't even get into the starting position? Uh, you should do the... Uh, so what I would recommend is stretch your hamstrings before you start and then do the seated leg raises. I have a video on that. I, Pretty sure you're referring to that, right? If you just type pike compression and my name, you'll see a video on how to improve your pike active pike compression. And I'm just gonna put this how to I'll just put that in the chat right now. And I would I so basically my answer is uh 
work on your active pike compression at this same time don't you don't have to wait so like if it's impossible for you to put your hands in front of you put them like by your hips or even behind you as like the ultimate regression if you need to do that okay um so yeah <laughs> sorry i'm just blasting questions your way i have nothing to do right now and i've always missed your live streams thanks for all you do no problem mitch glad to help uh thank you for asking i'm sure other people are benefiting from your questions a lot of people often have the same issues and questions in their mind too uh, let's see what's your uh, best stretch uh, exercise for improving upper back mobility for people that spend long periods of time in front of a computer there's no like specific one stretch however i will say get a pull-up bar or have a place where you can hang and just hang uh, at least once a day just like hang from the bar okay that will decompress your spine allow your shoulders to um, just just mainly decompress your spine and your stretch your lats because a lot of times like we get like a little hunched over right and forward neck like this you, know, you could see me right in this let me check my thing yeah yeah like eh, like this so you want to like be if you hang and just like hang it allows you to improve your overhead mobility and the other exercise that i would recommend let me pause this is uh if i type lat stretch entronique uh, i have a video that is just three minutes long and it looks like this i'm gonna link it to you right now uh and enda and uh, there we go so that is my uh awesome shoulder and latch stretch so this it's basically like you're doing cat cow the i don't know if you're familiar with the cat cow uh movement pattern but you're elevating your hands on a chair and then you're doing this and it's a really good overhead mobility stretch it will improve your thoracic extension like basically your ability for your upper back to bend backwards and stretch your lats which generally counters a lot of the sitting and hunching over stuff so if i you know uh you know of course there's like millions of more stretches that i would recommend um but i'm saying it right here increase your thoracic extension which is your ability to bend your upper back backwards which can help with posture there we go i just said what i wrote in my captions apparently so another good one is camel pose i would just say like go for my one of my follow along yoga videos um where is it my top 10 um top 10 like follow any of these videos as well every once in a while maybe once a week once a month whenever your body feels like it needs it go for it okay so shiny jimny uh says hi antronic just wanted to say hello hope you're having a great upcoming week and you are doing good thank you i'm doing great thank you uh stanislav says i mean genetics in a way of body structure for example i know that taller uh people like me do that lifts out the blocks so yeah i wouldn't say i wouldn't say the body structure is an issue either okay like that's really possibly only an issue when you're doing certain types of splits and even when your hips your let's say your bones are actually limited in a certain way you can probably get very close to the splits okay even with a limited uh hip bone structure okay so again don't let that get to you so 
I'm gonna be wrapping up this uh, live stream. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm gonna answer whatever questions are remaining and then uh, wrap it up because it's Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Thank you for raising your kids. <laughs> and um, I gotta go visit my mom. I got her flowers and you know, the usual. So. Uh, Kan, Kan says, uh, you have been very quiet on Instagram for some time. What does your current training look like and your goals too? My main goal is the one arm chin up, which I've been working toward, uh, when did I see? Started doing that back in August, I believe I restarted that. Uh, I did it a bunch in 2019 and then took a break for the front lever. I was working toward front lever and then I'm now working toward the one arm chin up doing mantle chin ups. I actually hit a new personal record in my last workout a few days ago, 22 reps of mantle chin ups with a fairly wide distance of, uh, of the rings of being apart, 22 reps on each side total, which is a lot of volume for a very strong, uh, hard exercise. So I'm really happy about that. So hopefully uh, this year I'll be able to do um, one arm chin up negatives. And if I can do that, that's a pretty big deal because one arm chin up is like the hardest pulling exercise, uh, body weight pulling exercise, body weight uh, related pulling exercise. So that's like, uh, that's like my main, that's been my main focus is the one arm chin up lately. And the cool thing is the one arm chin up is so lat intensive that it maintains my front lever at the same time. So I have my front lever is not going anywhere, which is great. So it's really nice. And I am quite an, quiet on Instagram because I am focusing, I focus my efforts on YouTube and my blog. I found that if I just focus on those two platforms, it's better for me and my mental health. Once in a blue moon, I post on Instagram, but honestly, I'm so like over the social media aspect and everyone being so fake. Like, okay, like there are people I know in real life on Instagram, right? Like I know them in real life and I see what their life is like in actuality. And then I see what they post on Instagram and it's just like so disconnected from who they re really are and what they do. It just turns me off on the whole thing and I don't want to like add to that bullshit because what happens when I go on Instagram and I'm on it for like five minutes looking at people's stories is I start to feel like shit. So you know what? I'm not going to contribute to other people feeling like shit as well. And you know, it's not that I'm not gonna post on there ever. I post on there sometimes, but in general, uh, I rather focus my efforts on YouTube and my blog, okay? Uh, being a little more focused is the way to go, okay? So yeah, uh, thank you everyone. Everyone's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome to everyone. Um, what do you do if you're always sore? I rest two days and I'm still sore after some walking and 10 minutes of weights. What do you do when you always want to overeat after exercise? So you shouldn't be always sore. A soreness is very normal whenever you're starting an exercise, a new exercise that you haven't done for a long time or it's completely new to you. And if you did a lot of it when you're if you haven't done it for a long time or never done it, normal to feel sore for many days. Sometimes I've been sore for like four or five days from like doing a little too much. Also doing a lot of eccentric exercises like negatives, a lot of them would cause soreness. However, um, just, uh, you know, if, if you're, you're still sore after two days, I wouldn't worry about it do some sort of cardio or some other exercise or even the same exercise you can work through soreness it's not dangerous to work through soreness and um it's one of those growing pains you kind of have to endure whenever you start like restart your training program or restart like or start a whole new um 
exercise, you're going to feel a bit of soreness. And a lot of people think that when they're not feeling sore, that they're not progressing anymore. But soreness is a very transient uh, experience, uh, transient phenomenon, meaning like it doesn't last very long. Okay. Um, so you can work through the soreness you can work out through the soreness even if it's going to feel a little discomfort or painful it will probably help uh help it dissipate okay so um after just 10 minutes of wait if you're that sore it just tells me that like you weren't doing that before that's all really um so let's uh remove that cool okay uh, bobo says thank you you're welcome uh best body weight exercise for strengthening hamstrings probably nordic curls um or they're also called natural leg curls so like um like uh usually you have to do the negatives of the nordic curls those are probably the best <sighs> because because is asking is it possible uh to start calisthenics at 189 centimeters absolutely absolutely just because you're tall doesn't mean you shouldn't start or do calisthenics are you going to progress slower than someone who's much shorter than you yeah your progress is going to be slower okay but at the same time there's a ton of sh people shorter than you that are not doing anything and you're going to progress faster than them because they're not doing anything if you keep at it don't let your height be your limiting factor or the thing that deters you don't say this story that i'm so i'm too tall for this i'm too tall for that you're not you're just gonna take a little longer than maybe someone else okay and that's fine don't let that stop you you can achieve everything all right if you want something you'll get it just look back in your time look back in your life haven't you gotten everything you've ever wanted you probably have if you put your mind to something you want something you got it okay don't forget that and um you might need a little more finesse there's going to be down times your uh, rate of progress is not going to be perfectly linear it's going to be like like a wave a cyclical wave everything in nature works in waves so you'll have your uh times where you feel a little downtrodden and you'll have your other times where you're just so pumped because you just got a new personal record or something a new achievement and it makes all the struggles worthwhile okay so so yeah yeah and uh cons says i agree completely about instagram yes yeah i think everyone has the same experience uh if you're on a social media site like instagram uh flipping through stories you feel this emptiness after like 10 minutes or so and it starts making you feel sad it's weird <clears throat> it's very weird stay off of those things guys <laughs> just stay on my youtube channel <laughs> i'm just kidding all right i'm gonna be ending the session right now thank you everyone for watching and i think i uh I think I went over everything I wanted to do and yeah everyone have a good rest of your day and I'm gonna you know catch you guys later all right thanks for watching and have a great weekend and week I don't know when the next live stream will be Mitch uh, I'll probably put out a polished video not a live stream next Sunday so look out for that i do the live streams like maybe once a month something like that if you guys want them more i'll do them more maybe so <laughs> we'll see have a have a great uh, have a great evening to you too all right